Hey, Laura. Hey, Mark. I love this neighborhood. I've actually worked on a number of houses around here. A lot of Dutch colonials, a lot of colonials. Yeah. But interior, exterior, kind of similar, but always different. Yeah, so ours is from 1929. We okay. really wanted an old house. And it was a lot of it was redone. And we thought, sure. oh, great, it's all done. And then as we lived here over time, we've realized, oh, it was flipped and not <laughs> flipped so well. So right. come on inside. I'll show all you right. around. So here's the living room. Oh, very nice. Nice crown molding. Thank you. Great. And the fireplace, the telltale sign that a flipper was here. Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. Uh, just to break down what you have, sure. uh, you have the block mantle, yep. which is just a chunk of wood cleaned up, thrown on top of the masonry. Okay. Below that, we have that stone veneer. Uh-huh. All right. Below that, we have a gas fireplace, Yeah. which a lot of people like. You throw a switch, you have a flame. It's a nice touch. Right. That's what we really liked about the place. Right. And then sitting on this couch, looking at the mantle, I noticed this is really done poorly. Something's up, yeah. yeah. Well, a few things anyway. Mm -hmm. um, just to start in the face, yep. you can see that these are not individual pieces. They're actually blocks that are weaved in together. Okay. And when I can see that weave, it's probably not a good job. Mm. That's the first thing. But okay. another thing, again, if you look at this corner, yeah. uh, they actually sell corner pieces, which would give you the illusion that you have a full stone going back into the wall. Mm -hmm. What they have done is they tried to make it a 45, but you can see they stick out like tabs, and again, they'll give you that inconsistent, unclean look that we're not trying for. And now that we're down low, yeah. Laura, look at this. Ugh. See how they try to mate the stone to the yeah, mantle? Yeah, it just looks so messy. And a very sloppy yeah. job. So if you look here, you can actually see the red brick underneath, right. and I was wondering if it was possible to clean that up and just get it back to the original. Unfortunately, no. Uh, once they applied this stone, that thin set mortar takes a grab and leaves a lot of residue on mm -hmm. it. So we'll take a lot of it down, but we're not going to be able to clean that brick. Okay. But we do have what they call a thin brick veneer. Okay. And that will give you the appearance of a brick. Yep. Okay. And we're going to bring it up eight inches on each side. Okay. Eight inches across. And that will mimic exactly what you had back here in 1920. And then after we can add the wood mantle around the more traditional look. That's right. I'm not a carpenter, but okay. I'm going to leave the brick in such a manner that they'll be able just to bring the mantle in and tack it to the wall and be done. Awesome. All right, Laura, so this is the fun part. Okay. It's called demo. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to look for a little wedge. Okay. Okay, to see if we can fit our tool in. Okay. We're going to pound that and see if we can get an opening or create an opening for ourselves. Okay. And that way we'll be able to get a bigger chisel in with a bigger hammer and just clean it up as we go. Sounds good. There you go. You're working it. Woo! That's it. So now that you have an opening, you should be able to pop everything right out. Okay, one little trick, Laura, is now that you've made this indentation right here, mm -hmm. I would take the sledgehammer and just, just bust that whole thing up as much as possible. And then as you're working the chisel through, it'll come out easier. There you go. Yeah. All right, you got it. I like the way you're trying to pull back on that chisel now. You can see it pop off the wall. Yeah, there you go. Woo! Woo! All right, now we're cooking. All right. That's it, you're finding the gaps. That's it. All right, what's next? All right, so what I was just doing is checking to make sure that the unit was level. Yep. It is. Okay. Uh, and as we talked about before we took that veneer off, we really right. didn't know what the condition was going to be. Right, right, right. So now we have a good look at it. But you can see it's almost what we thought. Some of that thin set is yeah. still on the brick. Sure. It's not going to come off. Okay. So what we're going to have to do with this is cover it again. Okay. So what we're going to use is a thin brick veneer. Okay. This is actually a brick mm -hmm. that's been cut thinly. Okay. Like that. And we're going to just bring it up the leg, mm -hmm. bring it across, and up the other leg as well. Okay. So you can see, pretty good look. It yeah. looks exactly like the brick behind it. The next thing we're going to want to do, which is probably the most important, okay. is going to be layout. And what I'm going to use to help me with that is a brick rule. On one side, it's a normal ruler, but on the other side, it's a series of numbers with increments that are going to help me with the spacing. 
So I'm just going from edge to edge, and that's my layout. I'm going to follow the number two all the way across. That will give me the correct spacing that I need. We're using a thin set just like a Tyler would. Uh, it prevents the brick from sagging because it has a fast setup time. And there's also an adhesive in it that helps stick the brick to the wall. When laying tile, because the surface that you're laying on is flat, the notch trowel is very handy. Here, I decided to back butter each brick because the brick behind it is inconsistently laid and there are holes in the joints. People think that uh, veneering is a material. It's actually a technique. Uh, it can be brick, it can be plaster, it can be stone. So if you're looking for this material in the store, it's not thin brick veneer, it's just thin brick. As I back butter these into place, I do wiggle the brick just to make sure it fills in all the voids. And then I take the level, make sure I'm level and plumb. Now we're ready to fill in the joints and I'm just going to use a regular type end mortar and use the same technique that I would if I were repointing a wall. So you don't have to do it in a straight shot. You can do no. it a little bit by little bit. Exactly. You just want to make sure the joint is full so the edge and the edge want to ride each brick. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yep. So try that one and that one. Perfect. There you go. Except then I got it. Yep, we'll, we'll, we'll go over and fix that. And now I'm going to concentrate on the first half of that joiner, like that. Okay. And now I can go basically where I want. And you see me stuff it in? Uh huh. Boom. Go to the top, make sure I stuff it. Coming back around, next brick, fill that void. When I feel like I'm full, again, I'm working my way in. Yeah, great, stuff it in. Make sure you push it with the joiner. Great, now watch this. I'm just gonna push in and then ride up. I know I'm full, so when I come down, I'm coming into something full. It's looking really good. All right, we're, we're about halfway there. Yep. We still have to wait three or four weeks because when the carpenter comes in to do the mantle and the new surround, he's gonna bang it around a bit. So right. if we wait three or four weeks, the stuff sets up, it's gonna look like, after the mantle, it's gonna look like it's been here since 1929. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, you're looking good, that's a nice yeah, transformation. she was happy. So I like the brick rule, although I'll be honest, I don't quite understand it. Well, every trade has a trick, you know that, yeah. and this is the mason's little trick. On one side, you can see it looks like a regular ruler. So we're inches and all the little inches, increments. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter inch, half inch, sure. Uh, opening, typical opening for a fireplace is 26 inches high. Uh, if I just laid brick after brick, I don't know if I'd get there. This brick rule, if I throw it around, you can see all these different numbers here. Yeah, so that's all Greek to me. Those are just hash marks. What do those mean? Well, How are you using that? So all I do is I place it up against my opening, mm -hmm. and you can see the increments going from 1 to 10. Yep, yep. right here. Right. So that one lands on a, it looks like a 4. That's a 4, and it climbs all the way up as such. 4, 4, 4. Cool. Right. And through that plan, I'm eventually going to hit my height. But if you go over here... You are at a, looks like a seven, 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 seven. So this is the difference between a seven joint and a four joint. That's right. So that gives me the ability to adjust my height as I go. So Mark, you were trying to hit 26, but when you flip it around, I noticed that it doesn't really land right on a four. Right. It's a little off. So right. if you play to fours, you're going to miss that mark. But I do have an opportunity to adjust that, and that's at my bottom course. Oh. So this first joint can go up or down according to what I need to finish at. Perfect. And are you marking it once, or are you adjusting all along the way? I usually mark everything up once, story pole, uh, story pole style, but uh, 
sometimes bricks are irregular, so I do take the opportunity as I go halfway up to remeasure. So you can jump from, say, a four to a three, and the eye probably won't pick it up? Another the eye right? will not pick that up, right. Beautiful. And next to the three, I'm seeing a red six. A red six. That six is going to indicate the amount of courses that we need to get to where of we're going. Of course it does. So again, great tool. So now you can estimate how many brick you need to finish the job. That's right. So you're not taking off extra brick from the stage at the end of the day. Good information, Mark. And uh, hmm, thanks. Oh well. Hey. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.